Good afternoon. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission. It's August 27th, 2012. Uh, roll call, please. Yes, Commissioner Shire? Here. Commissioner Morgan? Here. Commissioner Tufankian? Here. Commissioner Vartanian? Here. Commissioner Vidor? Here. Thank you. All present. Thank you. Thank you. Item number two on the agenda was the posting of the agenda. Um, the agenda for this meeting was posted on or before Tuesday, August 21st, 2012, on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Uh, item number three, the approval of the meeting minutes from July 23rd, 2012. Uh, commissioners, are there any comments or corrections? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> um, number four, oral communications, just the wonderful magical world of neon under Greg Grammer's comments and the Glendale Historical Society and Associates of the Brand Library. It should be world instead of work. World instead of work and brand so library. Like brand library. Yes. And there was one more on page three under six, old business. Uh, the fourth bullet point down, screening of when Glendale ruled the skies in conjunction with that's it anyone else okay is there a motion to approve the minutes so moved second roll call okay uh, I'm sorry I, I missed the move from okay. Meeting minutes to approve the meeting minutes. Okay, okay, thank you. Commissioner Vartanian? Yes. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner Tupengian? Yes. Commissioner Shire? Yes. And uh, Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes 5 0. Okay. Item number four on the agenda is oral communications. Uh, discussion is limited to the items not part of this agenda. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. The Commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. And we have one um, public speaker, Sean Bursell. Good afternoon, um, uh, Madam Chairperson and members of the Commission. I'm Sean Bursell, and I'm here on behalf of the uh, Glendale Historical Society. And I'm very pleased to announce that we are going to have our home tour on September 30th uh, of this year. Um, this year's tour is themed Glendale's Golden Age, Distinctive Homes of the 1920s and 1930s. Um, it will showcase uh, five period revival homes, uh, at least two of, of which are on the Glendale Register, and, and plus a charming um, uh, storybook house courtyard. And the tour will be, as I say, Sunday, September the 30th from 11 to 4. And the, the homes are in a very convenient two and a half mile um, route, easily accessible from down, downtown Glendale. And people can buy their tickets now. They can be purchased uh, through Glendale Arts at their box office or online at the um, Historical Society website, which is www.glendalehistorical.org. And that goes until September 26, and after that, you can buy the tickets at the um, uh, box office of the Alex Theater downtown. I'm also, uh, I also want to report that um, the Glendale uh, Historical Society had our annual meeting uh, this past, a, a week ago Saturday, at the Alex, and we gave out several awards that I want to make you aware of. The first was to the Consulate General of the Republic of Armenia in Los Angeles for their um, for outstanding achievement in historic preservation for their art architecturally sensitive uh, additions and good stewardship of the 1934 Spanish colonial revival at uh, 346 North Central. Um, and the Consul General, uh, Mr. Grigor Hav. Hanasian accepted the award, and I hope I said that right. Um, we also uh, gave an award to George Seeley Jr. for the outstanding rehabilitation work at the Seeley's uh, Furniture Building down at the corner of Brand and San Fernando. And this is really a prime example of the type of uh, adaptive reuse that, that should be encouraged. Um, and it really, they've modified that space uh, of a great old building and, and 
so that it's usable today but maintaining the, the historic features. It's really an outstanding job. We also gave awards to each of the four historic districts, uh, overlay, historic district overlay zones uh, established in Glendale in the past several years. Those are Royal Boulevard, uh, Cottage Grove, uh, Art Even Highlands, and our most recent one, the Ross Moyne Historic District. And those awards um, uh, recognize the formal uh, applicants for the districts and the volunteers who assisted in their establishment. We also gave an, our, an award to our past president, John Lacasio, who I, I, many of you, all of you know. Uh, we gave him the Zelia Blanton Award, which is given for significant um, impacts in our community through extraordinary involvement and continued dedication in advancing the cause of historic preservation. As, as you know, John was our uh, Historical Society president for three years. He curates the annual home tour, and he played a really crucial role in the um, historic district overlay zone ordinance. Uh, um, and so it was a very well-deserved. Finally, I'm very pleased to announce that the Historical Society has created a new program to provide grants to neighborhoods interested in pursuing the historic district designation. Um, and these grants will help defer the, the cost of the city application fee, which, is, which has gone up uh, recently. And, and we felt that th this was a great way to support um, the neighborhoods that are thinking of becoming, an, an, uh, becoming historic districts. And so we have a grant program to help defray the cost of that uh, fee. So if you're talking to people who are interested in a in, in historic district, and, and um, please let them know about that and have them talk to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to give uh, Mr. Platt some brochures about the home tour. Okay, item number five, comments from commissioners. Anyone have any comments? Um, I, I was out of town and unable to attend the annual meeting of the Glendale Historical Society, but I, I just wanted to thank the society for um, their recognition of all the work that was done for all of our current historic districts. Um, I'm pleased to hear about the grant program. I think that will be very helpful as the fees have gone up considerably. And um, Jay, I'm wondering, do we have any, I don't know what the right word is, uh, say in or jurisdiction over how the fees are structured. In other words, could we contemplate some type of tiered fee payment based on where applicants are in the process? Because it is a hefty sum to pay just up front with an application. Maybe it would be denied. And then there's this, for example, I think the fee has gone up to $2,000, mm -hmm. right? So an applicant comes forward, pays the fee, but then at some point in the process, they're denied. Mm -hmm. They don't get a reimbursement of any portion, do they? Not, not as of now. There's a process where you can apply for a reimbursement, and then we have an administrative procedure where we see if we can do that, if it could be a percentage of that amount. Oh. Okay. I, I think one thing that may be of interest that we could explore, we, we look at fees every year as they're changed. Um, there's the possibility that if we had another small historic district like Cottage Grove where there are only 14 properties, perhaps we could have a tiered fee for districts size. under a certain size and above a certain size. So we, we could definitely look at that in-house, but it's only something that happens once a year. So. Okay. And actually, maybe I'm not articulating well, but I'm thinking maybe at different points the fee would be structured so that the applicants pay based on how, what the actual costs are to the city along the, the way? The, the way the process is structured, since all of the decisions of the commission and the planning commission are advisory to city council, we really only know that the denial happens when we get to council, which is the very last step. So I'm not sure, you know. You know we, haven't, we haven't had this happen so far. Right, so, right, right. But, uh, but it's something we could agendize and talk about, perhaps? We can certainly talk about it, and I'll talk about it in-house with, with the planning staff to see if, if there's any process or if that makes sense for us to pursue that. Um, but I think there may be, it may come down to be aware that you, you know, may lose your 
your fee right. because there is a lot of work that we put into historic districts. No, we certainly don't recoup our staff costs through the uh, fee. Right, understood. And I guess um, aside from the fact that City Council has the final vote, the application could die at any point during the petition circulation. Sure, yeah. If, right? if the petition thresholds aren't met, but then we have the fairly generous extension uh, for a full year for the second petition and six months for the first. But yeah, you're, you're, you're right, it could die at that point. Okay, thank you. I had two quick things for staff. One is, as we're approaching the end of 2012, could we have an update on all the Mills Act contracts that had work plans due by December? Uh, maybe for next month? Sure. Well, we can do like we did last year where we had a chart and we can review those um, on next month's agenda. Okay. And then the second item would be, um, the, what is the progress of posting the historic register slideshow to the website or or lack is thereof? That accessible? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we haven't done that. Uh, it's not a difficult process. So I just don't want to lose sight of making that happen. Mm -hmm. There are two things. Originally, we were expecting a redesigned website where we could have images scrolling kind of on the main page. Um, I'm not sure that that's happening right now, but we could certainly make it available as a link in the meantime and then have that come up later yeah, on. That would be great. Okay, any other comments? I would just like to say I was able to attend the Historical Society membership meeting and it was a good soiree and was very fun and the fact that we were able to go into the Alex and have a tour was for a lot of people who had never been there uh, something very interesting for them all and uh, everything worked out well it wasn't too hot it was a wonderful time and I just want to thank them for putting on a very very good meeting. Thank you. Okay, the next items on the agenda is six old business, and um, I'd like to request changing the order of the agenda slightly. We'll take 6A, and then we'll take 7, new business, and then move to 6B. Great. So, is that okay? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I have a, um, a short uh, slide presentation for 6A. Okay. Um, this is the uh, exciting moment where the uh, proponents of the North Cumberland Heights Historic District have successfully collected a lot of signatures on the uh, petition, and this is the petition actually requesting that the city designate the historic district. Um, they have met all of the uh, requirements of the historic district ordinance, so the staff recommendation is for the commission to vote to recommend that city council uh, ultimately designate the historic district. Uh, just to recap uh, where we are, we're in the Cumberland Heights neighborhood, and over on the right side of the screen is the existing Art Even Highlands Historic District highlighted or outlined with dashes here. The gray line is the original Cumberland Heights uh, proposal from 2004. And you can see between North Cumberland Heights, which contains 179 properties, and the 87 properties of Art Even Highlands, we have a big chunk of Cumberland Heights that uh, is, is on the verge of uh, being designated. Uh, here's the actual map showing the, uh, the properties that are in the proposed historic district. Basically, it's everything north of Cumberland Road and on the south side of Cumberland Road that was part of the original uh, submission for the historic district in uh, the full Cumberland Heights area. Um, staff did an update of the original Cumberland Heights survey because it was out, out of date by the time, and the commission's already reviewed that and approved it. But just to recap, uh, we found that five of the nine criteria for designation were met uh, by North Cumberland Heights. Um, we determined a period of significance to be 1921 to 1953. That was changed a little bit after our last meeting where we discussed that, and I'll show a slide of the house uh, that changed that. Um, we went through all of the properties and resurveyed them to understand what their current condition is um, and any changes that may have happened since the initial survey. We found that uh, 140 out of 170, oh, that's a typo. I think this, per this percentage is still right. 140 out of 179 uh, properties are contributors, which is 82%, which is very high. Um, and it, uh, I'm sorry, the math here is messed up with the 30 homes, so I'll have to double check that the percentage is actually correct, but I believe it is. 
um, the ordinance requires that we have 60 percent and you can see in this map that all of the gray shaded properties are contributors and the white properties are the non-contributors. Um, this is the house um, on Grandview that we actually removed originally. We were kind of going back and forth, should this be a contributor or not. It has a lot of interesting historical associations, but the house itself has been altered dramatically and it was the commission's view that we should take this out and make it a non-contributor, which then changed our period of significance um, bringing it up to 1923 instead of 1914 as the starting date. And then finally, we are in receipt, as I said, of the second petition, uh, which was authorized by the commission uh, back in March. We received it uh, not long ago on August 13th, and that was within the six months that are um, allowed under the ordinance. Uh, 131 properties are on the petition, which means that the owners of 131 properties signed the petition. That is 73 percent, and that more, more than meets the 50 percent requirement and is right in the range that all of our districts more or less have been coming in. So uh, the proponents did a great job mobilizing the neighborhood, getting out there, talking to people, and uh, ultimately getting those who are interested in the historic district to sign the petition. Um, there has not been any organized opposition to the district, though of course some people who own properties may not want the district or approve of it, but there's no opposition and no petition opposing the district has been submitted. Therefore, all of the requirements of the ordinance have been met, and uh, the commission's uh, determination today, if you vote in favor of this, it's basically the commission is recommending that city council create the overlay zone that creates the historic district. Um, and we'll be going to Planning Commission with a similar presentation on September 5th, which is, again, part because it's a zone change, we have to go to the Planning Commission. Okay. Great, thank you. So on this topic, we've got two speakers, so let me open the public hearing. First, uh, Sean Bursell. Good afternoon, um, Madam Chairperson and members of the Commission. I'm Sean Bur Bursell speaking on behalf of the Glendale Historical Society. The Glendale Historical Society supports the creation of the North Cumberland Heights uh, Historic District. Uh, we agree with the historic resource survey update that uh, Mr. Platt just um, summarized. Uh, which found that the proposed um, district is eligible for designation under the city's historic district ordinance. And it, this is a neighborhood that really exemplifies some special elements of the city's history and really reflects um, the, the patterns of development of the city. You, you have, if Mr. Platt says, 179 um, homes in there, a, a, a good level of um, uh, intactness, if I can use that word, uh, in, uh, with the homes. And it really shows how the city developed between the 1920s and, and the 1950s. Um, and there are many different styles, the Craftsman, Spanish Colonial Revival, Mediterranean Revival, Monterey Revival, English Tudor Revival, uh, American Colonial Revival, Ranch and, and Modern. And uh, as, um, uh, as the study found, there were some uh, notable residents who lived in the area, such as Casey Stengel, um, Robert Jensen, who um, uh, built the must much missed Palace Grand Shops, Jensen's Arcade uh, downtown, and as, as Mr. Platt mentioned, the uh, mystery writer Charlotte Armstrong. Um, finally, we do want to note that, um, as Mr. Platt did, that 73 percent of the property owners in the proposed district have signed uh, petitions in support of creation and nobody has uh, filed a petition in opposition. That's an impressive level of support. The, uh, I, you know, I worked uh, in this, to a small degree on, on Ross Moyne, and I know how hard it is. And I know uh, members of the commission know how hard it is to get those signatures and knocking on doors again and again, trying to find people home, and, and maybe that person is not the owner of the property. And then you need all the owners of the property to sign. It is a difficult task. So when you see 73 percent, that is really, really impressive. And it's much higher than, than what's required uh, under the ordinance. So we really do commend all the volunteers that, that made this possible. So the Glendale uh, Historical Society is very pleased to support the creation of the North Cumberland Heights Historic District. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Gloria Sanders. <coughs> Thank you. 
Good afternoon. My name is Gloria Sander, and I'm a resident of the proposed North Cumberland Heights um, Historic District, which I hope that you will um, look positively on and offer your support, uh, particularly when it comes before the council, if it come, when it comes to the council, um, perhaps in September or October, October, I think. Uh, there's a few things I would like to say. First, uh, for myself, I wanted to um, say to Commissioner Vartanian how much I appreciate the fact that you brought up the idea of um, how the fee to apply for a historic district might be um, divided in some capacity because when we went and asked for support, we did get the funds. We had to pay $648 at that time, but it was really people contributing anywhere from $5 to $50. And those of us who were part of the initial um, request to garner support felt um, a little bit of responsibility to those who had contributed if it was going to fall through. I mean, it is one of those things where you do it out of the goodness of your heart and because you believe in it, but we were concerned what would happen if we did not um, meet all the requirements. So I think something like that is certainly worth thinking about in the future for other districts. Um, this has been close to a three-year project for us, so it's been slow but timely. It's given us a lot of time to think about the best way to approach this. Um, there's a saying that says we stand on the shoulder of giants, but in fact we have benefited greatly from um, not only the Glen Glendale Historical Society, but from those of you who may have um, been a part of historic district initiatives elsewhere, such as Ross Moyne and Royal Heights and um, also Art Even. And all the people who were involved in that gave us a lot of their time and good advice, as did Jay Platt and his staff. So I would like to thank all of them as well. I'd also like to say that the new guidelines that had been crafted that we were allowed to use made our job um, much easier. They're clear. Uh, they were concise. We found that it was uh, not too difficult to answer people's questions, and where there were questions that we couldn't ask, it was easy for us to turn to Jay or someone and get those answers. And so in that regard, it's a rubric or an infrastructure that does make these kind of applications much easier to, um, to embrace. So to all those people who were involved with the new um, set of guidelines, I, I can personally say thank you, as I'm sure my colleagues in the neighborhood can. So I would just like to ask that you would um, please embrace our application and do what you can to offer your support and move the process along so that we could be granted this overlay. And now I have to read a short um, message from my colleague, Robert Farkas, who is also a member and a, I mean a, a member of this group of us who have been trying to get the um, historic district um, in place. Robert is a a Mills Act homer, a owner, home owner. He lives on um, Cumberland Heights. And he says, Dear Historic Preservation Commissioners, I wish I were there in person to make my statement to you today. I have asked Gloria Sander, who has worked tirelessly to make the North Cumberland Heights Historic District a reality, to read my statement because I am playing in the Glendale City Golf Championship today, which benefits the Glendale Parks and Open Spaces. Gloria and I, with our two Australian cattle dogs at our sides, have been among the community volunteers collecting signatures on the petition supporting the North Cumberland Heights Historic District. We have successfully gathered over 73% 70, of the homeowner's signatures, which in my opinion is significant. The non-signing residents were not necessarily opposed. Some were just unreachable because of illness, residency in nursing homes, or foreclosure proceedings. I strongly support the historic district for two very tangible reasons and several intangibles. The first tangible reason is that our homes will become more valuable, significantly so. Studies from Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Phoenix, and Tucson, among others, easily found on the internet, support the fact that the historic designation increases property values within the district. Two of our most important realtors, Margie Simpson, Simpkins and Jerry Cragnotti, will also vouch that our homes will become more valuable. Second, property repairs and remodel proposals will go through the transparent guidelines of the Glendale Historic District as opposed to the Design Review Board. No additional layer of governmental bureaucracy is involved. 
The intangibles are that the character of our neighborhood will be best preserved, civic pride and pride of ownership are enhanced, and we will have formal recognition of the significant architecture and significant past and present, present residents within our district. Thank you for your patience in listening to my statement and for hopefully bringing the North Cumberland Heights Historic District closer to fruition. Sincerely, Robert Keith Farkas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the last speaker, Tammy Relier. Good afternoon. My name is Tammy Relier, and I'm actually here with two hats on. Um, first, I come here on behalf of the Northwest Glendale Homeowners Association. I'm a board member, but I'm also here because I was one of the lead applicants for the Art Even Highlands Historic District, as well as going as far back as the original Cumberland Heights Historic District, which, as you know, Commissioner Vidor, we go back a long way through that process, and I'm sure you're very glad to see that the neighborhood has now expanded with a potential district being added onto the Art Even Highlands. Personally, for me, this is really an exciting day. When I first moved back in the neighborhood, in this neighborhood in 2003, I saw a piece of paper left on a little table about a potential historic district forming in our area. I was so excited, I called up Jerry Cragnotti right away, and little did I know I was jumping in with, two, with both feet at the same time. And back then, Cumberland Heights, as you recall, it was really in its infancy stage as we look back now. Um, most of you will remember, if you even said the word historic district in Glendale, people would kind of stare, with, stare at you and say, what are you talking about? We've never heard about it. And now it's just another word that everyone seems to now embrace. I would like to take this opportunity to really congratulate Gloria Sander and all the neighbors that have taken the helm and picked up where we left off in now getting the North Cumberland Heights area. That was our ultimate goal, was to get our whole area, the original boundaries, covered under the, under the other application. I'm also here on behalf of the Northwest Glendale, like I said, um, Homeowners Association. And Mr. Platt, I don't know if you got this email in time, but Peter Fwad um, sent an email a letter in support of the um, application. Should I read it or do you want me to just hand it to the commissioners? You can read it if you'd like. Okay. And we need a copy. So. Okay. It says here, ladies and gentlemen, the Northwest Glendale Homeowners Association strongly urges that you recommend that the city council establish the North Cumberland Heights Historic District Overlay Zone. Preserving our, our historic neighborhoods is the primary goal of the Northwest Glendale Homeowners Association. Members of our organization were at the forefront in establishing the Art Even Highlands Historic District, and we have given help and support to the effort to form the North Cumberland Heights Historic District Overlay Zone. The new district would re represent a significant expansion of the protection for the historic homes in Northwest Glendale. The proposed district covers many contributing homes of historic significance and includes neighborhoods that form the gateway to Brand Park. As evidenced by the signed petitions, the district enjoys significant support of the homeowners in the area. Sincerely, Peter Fwad, President of the Homeowners Association. Do I hand it to... So again, thank you for allowing me to speak, and, and I hope you do support the North Cumberland Heights application to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, public uh, hearing closed. Commissioners, any comments or discussion? Um, I just want to commend um, the group of people who are bringing forward this request uh, for the job you've done. Um, I want to thank you for um, forwarding and continuing efforts in historic preservation. This clearly is um, another one of our very important neighborhoods, historic neighborhoods. And I think most of us do understand um, here on the dais what it takes to accomplish this effort. Um, I understand completely having gone through it and I, I do really appreciate what you all have done so I, I will support this. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Um, again, I would 
um, I don't want to say exactly what Lorna said, but I applaud all the volunteers, and um, I really appreciate that neighborhood. I think it's a beautiful neighborhood, and thank you so much for all your hard work. And three years is a long time, and I realize that you know it's a it's a volunteer. Uh, basis, so thank you very much for all your hard work. And having 73% of the signatures really validates that everybody or a, a big, big group of the neighborhood is on board. Um, so I would definitely strongly support the establishment of the historic overlay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. all right, I guess I'll, I'll be next. Um, great work, um, North Cumberland Heights, and everybody, really, who's been involved. Um, two, two things really stand out in my mind here, aside from all the wonderful volunteer work everybody's done, and that is that, yes, over the last um, uh, 10 to 12 years, as um, Ms. Relier mentioned, uh, there's just been a huge, huge upswing in the uh, the progress that's been made in not only making historic districts and landmarks happen in Glendale, but just in general overall public awareness across the entire spectrum of the city, not just a small contingent of people. And it's that kind of community understanding and celebration of our history that really makes me personally feel great because I, for the first time in the last year or so, I feel like, feel like we're really all in it together. You know, it's no longer these us and them factions battling. Sure, there will never be a 100 percent agreement about anything related to historic preservation, but that's okay. That's true of everything, <laughs> especially when it comes to policies and practices in government. So um, congratulations to everybody, and I also appreci appreciate Ms. Sanders' comments about the guidelines because I really feel like the basic foundational work that was done several years ago that, that delayed the process was well worth it. And what we have here in Glendale um, in terms of the way our ordinances and guidelines are structured is really something to be proud of um, because I think the city is recognized nationally now for what it's done. So congratulations to everybody in the room and onward. I'd like, <clears throat> I'd like to say the same thing. 73% is, is great. And this, it is a really great thing. It's like getting the ball rolling and it just keeps going. And I, I appreciate all the work that you've done. North Cumberland Heights. It's just a, a great thing. It's just on with what, what they did over in Ross Moyne. It just keeps going and hopefully we'll have more and more districts and um, I thank you very much and I support it wholeheartedly. Thank you. I, I concur also with the my fellow commissioners. Uh, thank you all for the hard work and dedication and the door-to-door -door, uh, trusting that you've done. But anyway, just want to say thank you again and um, I fully support it as well. So with that, do I have a motion? Um, I move that the Historic Preservation Commission recommend to City Council that the North Cumberland Heights District be um, approved for a historic district overlay zone. And I'll second that. Roll call, please. Okay, Commissioner Vartanian? Yes. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner Tufankian? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Madam Chair Shire? Yes. Five zero. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, now we move to item seven, new business. Two twenty one West Kenneth Road. This is a Glendale Register nomination and a Mills Act contract application. Okay. Uh, Christina Park uh, wrote the uh, staff report for this, but she couldn't be here today because of school conflict. So I will uh, give the presentation. Uh, the owner of the property is here, as is the consultant, Tim Gregory, if you have any specific questions. So I'll quickly run through a, a little bit of the history. Um, here we are on 221 West Kenneth Drive, uh, this uh, very uh, dramatic American colonial revival um, is really quite something when you see it, but from the street, as you know, if you had a chance to visit it, uh, you can't really see this house because it's, uh, it's one of the grand properties on Kenneth Road, similar to the Madison Boyd Jones house that once had an extensive uh, landscape front lawn leading up to the dramatic, you know, double height portico. Um, that 
uh, was lost in 1955 when the property was subdivided. So there are two houses in what used to be the front yard of the house. But nonetheless, this is still uh, really a special property when we look at the quality of its architectural design and details. The name of the architect is not known. It was designed by Paul Baer, who is a builder. Um, it's obviously the work of someone who understood the style and how to work with proportion and balance and harmony. It's, it's a very solid work of architecture. Um, it has the name Colonial View, which if you saw on the gate may have struck you as unusual as it does me. Um, the, we know that this name goes back at least to the 1950s. Christina did some research so we could try to figure out if this has been a name and a spelling that's been around for a while, long enough for us to consider using it as the, as the name of the house. Um, and because, as with um, Cedar, Cedar Knoll, a house down Kenneth Road that also is a named property historically, but we don't know if that name goes all the way back to the beginning of time for the house. Um, but this has been around long enough that we're recommending that the house be called the Kendall House for its original owner, as well as Colonial View with, the, with this uh, kind of spelling. Uh, Mr. Kendall is a person of some interest as kind of an early sort of, I don't know if it's exactly a franchisee, but with the J.C. Penney organization, um, but based on the research that was provided in the report, we can't say that he was significant at the level that we assess um, under Criterion C in general. But staff definitely thinks the house meets uh, Criterion D for its architectural quality. Here we are located in the Verdugo Viejo neighborhood on the north side of Kenneth Road. A couple of close-ups of the details, the uh, broken pediment over the door, uh, the French doors at the second floor with the iron balconette echoing the French doors that line the kind of long dramatic patio at the ground floor. And then just details like the uh, decorative balustrade and the dentals along the cornice and the columns themselves are, are very impressive to have this two-story height. Um, the house is incredibly well balanced with the porte cochere on the east side of the house that you can see in this photograph balancing the sunroom on the west side of the house. It's a little harder to photograph, but with the same sense of proportions and each of those structures has a terrace on top accessible to the second story rooms. Um, in this photo you can see that there was some remedial work done uh, to the chimney and some other facade work after the uh, 94 Northridge earthquake. Um, the only significant exterior change uh, to the house was the addition of this second floor um, in the same style as the house. This was originally another terrace, so there was a one-story wing that projected to the rear. And then in 1996, I believe, um, this second-story addition was made, um, working very closely with the kind of design details that uh, you find on the house. A few of the details may not be as as well proportioned and wrought as the original house, but as additions go, um, staff felt that this was really something that works uh, nicely with the design and doesn't detract from the historic character. Here's one point where you can see the transition from the addition on the right to the original gable end. Uh, this return is is a little unusually proportioned. Um, but it doesn't, it's at the back of the house and certainly doesn't detract uh, uh, in any major way from the overall quality of the architecture. Uh, the detached garage is also an original feature and maintains the colonial revival uh, appearance, has its original windows, as does uh, the entire house, uh, pretty much has its original wood windows. Um, obviously, the garage doors are replacement doors, and this uh, the little access door is not original. We're not sure what that looked like, but it's probably the original location uh, to access the upstairs quarters. A little bit remains of what was probably a very, very grand uh, landscaped front yard, and is still a very nice feature of the house that would definitely uh, be recommended for inclusion as part of the designation. And then what was kind of a very surprising feature for us was the inclusion of this kind of landscaped waterfall in the backyard that features extensive uh, faux bois, the kind of concrete that's made to look like logs and, and limbs, um, is really quite amazing. We have another example of this kind of concrete work at Rockhaven um, in North Glendale, but that's the only place that I know of uh, that we've seen it. It exists. Um, it's, it's an 
it's an old style going back to the 19th century, but there was a Mexican artisan, a whole family of artisans who came up from Mexico into Texas, crossed over through Arizona, and one of the grandsons, I think, came to the Los Angeles area and did some work in San Gabriel, Beverly Hills. I have no idea if this is his work or if there's even anyone who could tell us that, but it's definitely a rare feature and we strongly recommend that the commission look at this as part of the designation, even though we can't say that it dates to the period of construction of the house. And we're also recommending, uh, in terms of the Mills Act, that um, remedial work be taken on some of the areas where there's some exposed iron, which is only going to get worse if it stays exposed to water. And so we would work with the owner to find a craftsperson who actually knows what they're doing with this, mm -hmm. and we'll have to do some research. Um, but it's, it's a pretty exciting feature. Down to, I don't know if you had a chance to climb up the waterfall, but there is a little concrete bird perched on top of the little concrete uh, lamp post, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so based on the quality of the architecture, staff felt this was an exemplary uh, representative of the American colonial revival style and recommend that you uh, designate this under Criterion D. And the owner, Krikor Kalinjian, is here, and Tim Gregory as well. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Krikor? Good afternoon. At the beginning, I was nervous, but after your kind words, uh, I just became emotional. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just here for two years in this house, and I'm really, uh, this is, uh, I take pride in this house, and I don't think there is anything that I would change, anything that I would do to change, because this is, I, for me, it's perfect house. Uh, I think at this point, after kind words of Jay, I would say the only thing that is missing to this house is being historic. Uh, the reason why we, um, first of all, we don't want to change because we think it's uh, gorgeous, it's unique, and the second thing, uh, I think it goes with my character. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say my house is historic. Mm -hmm. I love, I love that word, so uh, hopefully, kindly, you accept our uh, request. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Tim Gregory. Hey, I'm Tim Gregory, and uh, the owner hired me to prepare, well, to actually to revise the history of the property that I'd done earlier, and to also to fill out the Register and Mills Act applications. When I first went to look at the house, I knew its name was Colonial View, Colonial spelled with a K and View, V-U-E. And when I went into the property, I expected to see something kind of cheesy <laughs> and inauthentic. And when I went around the turn of the driveway, I really stopped dead and thought, it's Mount Vernon in the middle of Glendale. And I've been doing this kind of work now for 20 years, and I've seen about 2,500 properties throughout Los Angeles County. And there are very few that made me stop in my tracks, and this one did. So I'm, I'm really urging you to give it an historic designation. I know it's sometimes a problem when it's not publicly viewable from the street, but I think this house is architecturally important enough, an important enough part of Glendale's history that it should be given a designation. Thank you. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners, any thoughts or comments? Quite a few. Mm -hmm. You want to start? Yeah, I have to concur that with the owner that this house is, is unique. I'm surprised that it's taken so long to get onto the Glendale Register. When you're doing a lot of historic research, this house comes up again and again and again. And if you had the chance to uh, <clears throat> see the movie um, that the Historic Society of the Crescenta Valley did about two weeks ago on Glendale on Parade, this house is featured in it. And you get to see it in its glory just as it is today though in 1939 when it has the lawn and everything else and it's uh, it's I hate to use the word unique but it definitely is unique it is it, I am not an architect but this is one of those homes that I have like I've said I've seen over and over and over again and I'm just surprised that it hasn't been on the Glendale Register yet and I'm I can hardly wait to have it on the, and we both can be historic then <laughs> okay. I would have to concur with Commissioner Morgan. I'm surprised that it is not on the um, historic registry yet. Um, Mr. Kalinjian, Mrs. Eftahai, thank you so much for bringing forth your beautiful home. Um, it was built in 1932 for a sum of 36000 
and that was far beyond or far above what other homes of that era were built. And I think the craftsmanship and the quality of the building really, it, it comes through. It really shows. Um, this property encompasses many characteristics of the old colonial um, homes and reminds of, of reminds of us reminds us of Mount Vernon. Um, and one of the characteristics of the colonial home was the large um, front front yard or the setback. And I can just imagine in the 1930s how beautiful it must have been, how grand it must have been. Um, as mentioned before, it is currently not visible from the street due to the subdivisions that were done um, along the way. As you walk up to the house, you notice the symmetry with the entrance door in the center, flanked by the uh, French windows, um, the front colonnade and the molding, the broken uh, pediment, just very classical colonial home and really is uh, uh, an exemplary um, example of a colonial home. Um, as we walked to the back of the house, I would have to agree, I was, I just stopped and I was in awe of the beautiful waterfall coming down. Um, and I did a little bit of research on the faux bois, which is false wood in French, and it is an old, age-old art with only a handful of artists remaining. And looking it up on the internet, it looks like it's a very labor-intensive and technically difficult um, work that was done. So it really is something that needs to be um, taken care of very carefully and preserved very well. And I think another example of it is at the Huntington Library, which I, which I read about. Um, so I would definitely be in support of this house, and thank you so much for bringing it forth. Um, yes, what everybody else said, and I think that the wow factor was, as you mentioned, Mr. Gregory, just um, unusual in that many of the houses, not all of them, but most of them are, you know, we've seen them, we know of them, we say, gee, you know, boy, wouldn't it be nice if this was on the register, but this was a complete surprise. So I guess my only regret, you know, of course I'm going to vote yes for your house because it's stunning and certainly historical and architecturally very important and significant, but my only regret is that the, um, I'm sure maybe you don't regret it because you'd have to get the lawn mowed, but, you know, the, this house is a grand house that deserves a grand piece of property around it, so seeing a house at this grand a scale being subdivided in this way, it's a little bit like, oh, too bad that the rest of the community can't have this, you know, join in us with this collective appreciation of it, because I'm sure it will be, when people know of it, a source of civic pride, obviously for you and personal pride, but also for the rest of us. So. Congratulations on your stewardship and, uh, and on your beautiful home. So there are very few adjectives left, and <laughs> I would just have to concur with everything that has been said. This truly is an exemplary rendition of the American colonial style, and um, I do support the nomination, and I thank you again for bringing it forward. Um, should we talk about um, certain Mills Act? Um, what are some thoughts no. about Mills Act? Some thoughts about additions. Oh. Will that work, or did you want to? So you're taking questions now. I'm um, whatever, oh, okay. whatever comes. No, you can continue. So I, I just, um, in going through the property, and again, I, I think it it looks virtually the same as it did. Um, when it was built, um, but if, if we do move forward and we do make a Mills Act recommendation, um, I would like to float some thoughts. Um, and Jay, I don't know if you, it would be helpful to go back to the slides. Um, I think I noticed that um, all of the windows have shutters, if you could stop there. <laughs> okay. I believe all of the original windows to the house um, have shutters 
And I believe um, these windows here were part of an addition, if I'm not mistaken, or a change out. No, this, these are the original. This is the original facade here. The addition is to the right, which is better right seen there. here. But this second floor area is the addition. And then, oops, this is kind of the other side of that addition. Okay. Here. Could, what room is um, the small window in the center? I bathroom? believe a bathroom. Master bath. Because it looked to me like those were not original windows from the interior. That is quite possible. I, I believe I they were, you know, from the exterior, the, uh, you know, shape and number of um, lights, you know, match These, the existing. Actually, but I believe, I believe if I'll, I'll leave this and then zoom in, the, the, the way we were able to kind of uh, figure out uh, original window versus non-original window was that these windows have these the kind of scrolled yes. but I what I've recently learned I've learned a name for these I used to call them ears or tails I never knew what to call them <laughs> I read something that called them OG lugs OG being the shape of the curve lug being whatever um, so I don't know if that's a real name but that's what they call them in San Francisco where they have it a lot so when I saw these, my presumption was that these were early windows because you never see these on later windows. But I don't remember if I saw this window from the inside or not. I, I could have looked, looked more closely, um, but I'm pretty sure it was in a, a replacement at some point. Okay. Anyway, I think the thought, continue on with your thoughts and we can talk about it. Right, and the only, the only thought being that this appeared to be the only window or opening on the entire home that was not flanked by shutters, and so if it were a new, a newer um, window or opening, that we might suggest shutters be added. Can you go to the other facades of the house? Yeah, because it's true there are shutters on pretty much mm -hmm. every window. Every every one. Every I single notice. one. <laughs> Okay, so a mills are conditioned to uh, add wood shutters uh, flanking this uh, second floor bathroom window? Unless we can find an original photograph that would show... Yeah, we, we can, I, I could go look. Sometimes you can see the, the little hinges that the shutters hang on are called pintles. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes if those had been removed, we might see a disruption in the stucco or something. So we could look at that window more closely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in the absence of concrete evidence, would you rather see shutters on these windows, even if we're not sure if it's the historic condition? I also believe like the cornice above the windows is missing as well, which made me think it was a new addition. It, it is kind of, yeah, it is. So I'm thinking those two elements, in my mm -hmm. opinion, would at least, you know, maintain the consistency from every other facade. Okay, so we would restore the cornice yeah. like we find on pretty much every other window, mm -hmm. including the windows at the addition. Now, if we were to find that this window was a later addition, perhaps reusing an old window inside, if that's where the little OG lugs are coming from, um, under the secretary standards, it might be preferable to leave this as, as it stands, as kind of a later addition. So uh, what we could do is do more research. I could visit the site, and I don't know if Mr. Gregory could join us, um, or if there are any old photos of the back of the house. But we could look at that more carefully and then report back to you next month. That'd be great, sure. Okay, because what, what we could do, you could still vote in terms of the register and the contract and then we won't be writing the contract till the end of the year right. so we can make sure it happens before before we do that um, one other small detail if we could go to a view of the front of the house the balustrade if we have one right there, uh, right there. <laughs> okay, well you want a big balustrade shot um, the the um, post at the far right Missing its missing. little wow. The, yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> missing its little hat. Little hat. If you go to the close-up yeah. photo, you could see it yeah, better. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Uh, with the, I think that there was a bomb, uh, <laughs> oh. Great. Great. Um. Another thought is the garage doors, perhaps, 
to be um, replaced something that might have that might be more in keeping with the original style I think they're a little obviously um, more contemporary mm -hmm. and then um, just I think um, the the port Kushera is showing signs of sagging and I think some of the beams um, were showing water damage so I think it would be good to have um, that area checked for continued maybe termite damage or um, continued drainage issues and maybe get that fixed if possible and there was also some water or termite damage um, which um, the owner is aware of um, across the um, the trellis in the back by the pool and I'm sorry to have such a long list but it's 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 a big house <laughs> um, and then I think just a general maintenance in terms of painting I, I think I noticed a lot of um, peeling especially around um, the window frames those would be my thoughts thank you I just want to say to the owner um, I think this house is perfect for you and your family and uh, thank you so much for your stewardship of it and bringing it forward for our um, weighing in on adding it to the Glendale Register um, I think uh, over the years you'll enjoy living there and even with a few modifications that we may add to the work plan for the Mills Act I think they're fairly minor in the grand scheme of things and I, I would support also adding um, sure. Albert Tennant has said adding those to the Mills Act for long-term care mm -hmm. and the uh, the concrete work in the back yes as well I agree. Yes. so with that does anyone uh, have a motion I have mm, I'll give it a shot um, I would like to make a motion that pursuant to um, the Glendale Municipal Code, code that um, the Commission recommends to City Council that we designate the property at 221 West Kenneth Road as a historic resource, add the property to the Glendale Register of Historic Resources pursuant to Section 1520.060 of the Code and authorize the City Manager to enter into a Mills Act contract for the property with say everything conditions okay. noted with conditions as noted um, uh, the cornice and uh, potentially uh, pending further evaluation of the um, the agent uh, originality of the window uh, cornice and shutters on the window uh, the um, cap on the one missing cap on the balustrade up top uh, I think we had a replacement of the garage doors with the ones more suitable to the age of the property and some concrete work to be done. Was it on the swimming pool? Itself? No, no, no. Oh, for. oh, the, oh, oh, okay. I really, I had missed that one completely. Uh, the faux bois uh, concrete work to, um, to uh, uh, rehabilitate the faux bois. And the trellis. And the trellis. As well as water damage at the port cochere, nope. water and termite damage at the trellis, and uh, uh, peeling paint at some of the windows, and maybe some other woodwork we'll look at. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Roll call, please. Roll call. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner Tupankian? Yes. Commissioner Martanian? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. And Madam Chair Shire? Yes. Thank you. Out of five zero. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we move to item 6B, proposed changes to the historic preservation ordinance and the recommendation to city council. And in terms of the uh, two ordinances you're looking at, um, they're agendized separately and they need to be voted on separately. Um, the 
proposal to change or, or make changes to the uh, historic preservation ordinance is the one where there were more significant, you know, substantive changes. So you have a staff report that basically pulled out what I think were most of the, the major changes that we're proposing. Um, since the commission first saw this, we've had this reviewed by the city attorney's office, and we've also had it reviewed by the state historic preservation office, which is a requirement under the CLG um, for us to have this approved by them before the city officially approves it. Um, in both cases from city attorney and SHPO, um, there were modest changes in terms of some language issues, but nothing um, substantially different from when the commission saw it. Um, also, all of the commission's um, comments, which there weren't, it was mainly kind of just um, corrections and modest changes have been incorporated. So what you have now in both the final, cop, final proposed version and the strikeout version is what we would like to take to city council with your approval. Um, the city attorney's office was particularly not concerned, but the uh, in terms of the ability of city council to designate a property over an owner's objection. Um, the idea is we think that's good policy. It gives us kind of a relief valve in case there was a very serious situation where an owner was not interested in designation, possibly was going to alter or demolish an important property. If the city council with a four-fifths majority felt that this was a significant site that was important to the people of Glendale, it would give them the ability to designate over the owner's objection. Um, what we'll do when we take this to city council is really make a big point that this is a big shift. It gives them the ability to weigh it one way or the other. Um, I'm not sure where that's going to go as far as council goes, but I think we should, we should definitely keep it in there. Mm -hmm. So I can answer any questions you have. I don't uh, have any kind of formal report for this besides the staff report that you read. I actually um, was unable to attend the meeting, which was the first review. And mm -hmm. so I do, I, I did, you know, in reading through this version, I did have a, a couple of thoughts to bring forth. Sure. Um, one of them speaks specifically to um, the procedure for designation that you just brought up. Um, which talks about council being able to um, designate a historic resource by a supermajority. And I was wondering maybe, because we know what that relief valve is for, and it's really, we're saying it's, it's, um, it's if um, an undesignated resource were, you know, going to be severely altered or destroyed, that maybe we could just add um, that it, um, designation of historic resources may also be initiated by a supermajority vote of city council without the consent of the owners of record of the subject property when the subject property is in jeopardy of being demolished or severely altered. Uh, I, I mean, do we the, would the, adding that's that kind of implied oh. in there? And that and what you're suggesting would actually limit it in in case there was a property that. For whatever reason, council just felt was so critical to the history of the city that we should do something now before we wait for something bad to happen. I don't picture that situation ever coming up. Right. I, but I would. I wouldn't want to limit this any more than what we've got there. Um. I. That's if that's how everybody. If that's how the commission feels about it, then I would. I would say leave it as is. I think it just sort of could instill the fear of, you know, designation without, um, in general, for almost any reason. Yeah, you know, I think the, the check and balance is that we need four out right. of five council members and, you know, we know that council doesn't act if there isn't support from the community on something like this. So. Okay. That's, um, that's fine. Just a thought. Also, before oh, we sorry. move on, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. I overlooked one public speaker. Oh. So should we do that yeah. now and then continue? Sure. Sorry about that. I'll no, no, right no. Back no, no. That's fine. So I need to open the public hearing. We have a speaker on 6B, uh, Sean Bursell. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, no problem. Um, 
Madam Chairperson, members of the Commission, I'm Sean Bursell. I'm with the Glendale Historical Society. And the Glendale Historical Society supports the proposed changes to the uh, Historic Preservation Ordinance number 15-2.20 of the Glendale Municipal Code. Um, we specifically note with favor the streamlined and clarified uh, criteria for designation to the register, uh, the clarification of procedures for review and approval of major alterations and minor alterations as, as defined for registered register properties, uh, the definition of visible from the public right of way, uh, the requirement to avoid demolition by neglect, and the requirement to uh, maintain protected landscape features. The Glendale Historical Society also strongly supports the proposed provision for a supermajority of the City Council to add a property to the Glendale Register uh, without the consent of the property owner in compelling circumstances. And we agree that they should be compelling uh, circumstances. Um, although I, 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 I will say I, I tend to agree with Mr. Platt there, I don't think you want to cabin that too much and restrict that too much in terms of in, in terms of what that means because uh, you can't foresee um, what those circumstances might be. We understand that this may be controversial, um, uh, but the city really needs to have this power for those extraordinary cases, and, and we emphasize extraordinary cases, where clearly eligible outstanding property is threatened with a major alteration or, or demolition. The changes as proposed um, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the document that you have before you will provide uh, greater consistency with state and federal laws, uh, provide more clarity to the owners of properties on the register and those who seek to have their properties des designated, and greater authority for the city to protect the outstanding historical and architectural heritage of the city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, continue this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next under 15.20.060, um, item G, which reads an application to list a property on the Glendale Register will not be considered if in the previous five years an earlier application for the same property was either withdrawn pursuant to section 15.20.060F of this code or denied by a vote of city council. And I'm wondering if, if that might not be a little restrictive. Perhaps um, there would be a change of ownership and, um, you know, the owners, whatever the reasons might have been under 15.20.60F, the owners might be willing to remedy those, that situation. Or, um, you know, I'm thinking there could be new research that is uncovered about the history um, or the, the place of a property or owners of a property within the city's history that could be found and, and might, you know, be worthy of bringing forward if a nomination had formerly been. Yeah, that, that's a good point about the new uh, research. What, when we were thinking in terms of putting this uh, in terms of a withdrawal, that was a withdrawal after a commission recommendation of denial. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, that could even happen in the absence of new research that could change everyone's mind about something. Um, we, we put this in because we want to be consistent with other policies about withdrawing applications and not having things kind of linger in the files as kind of open cases endlessly. Mm -hmm. We could clarify uh, the withdrawal would be uh, the result of a commission recommendation for denial and in the rare case where maybe there is more research out there. Um, uh, so we say that, um, that the applicant may withdraw the application by submitting a written note or an application will be automatically withdrawn. This is under F. Mm -hmm. um, if such note is not received within six months of the date on which the Historic Preservation Commission voted. To so recommend denial. Yeah. Right. That, so. Yeah, that they did recommend denial. Mm -hmm. And so that I think I'm reading this, that the property owner chooses not to move forward to city council. Yeah, which is generally what happens if the commission votes to deny. There's a presumption that city council is very unlikely to right. designate something over your denial recommendation. So, I, I mean, I think if the, if the five years is coming, is basically in line with other such um, policies, 
Again, I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. for example, we looked at a property, um, perhaps it was at the last meeting, that we thought was a very significant property um, in Glendale's history and unique in terms of the type of architecture. But there had been significant, there had been one significant addition which um, the commission took issue with and then also there was the question of windows. And then this might be a radical thought, but I'm thinking that if a new owner were to take over that property and look at it and say, you know, I'm willing to take down that addition to mm -hmm. bring it back to how it was, and I'm willing to make the changes to, you know, the fenestration. And, you know, do they have to wait five years? To well, what, I'm, what I'm thinking, based on what you're saying, which are all good points, we could add um, kind of a, a little escape clause here that in in the uh, uh, with, with the addition of compelling evidence contrary or you know we could we could word this to basically say the Commission can reconsider this mm -hmm. timeline if there is compelling evidence presented um, which would then come to staff we'd probably have to have a hearing which wouldn't be a Glendale register hearing it would be a hearing does this new evidence rise to the level that you would want to reconsider mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. so if we add then would alterations of a potential new owner fall under evidence yeah I think okay. I, I think I would word this broadly enough mm -hmm. to kind of incorporate new research about a historic person or event or something or the willingness of an owner to uh, make changes that the Commission had recommended but the former owner may have said no way but a new owner might change their mind yeah that sounds like a good, good thing. Thank you. Sorry, let me just take a quick. Um, and then some housekeeping stuff. I don't know if that's the type of thing you want to go through yes. now. Love or to go through that right now. Yeah. yeah um, okay. I, I won't go through every capital and lowercase c, but I'll just note that I think um, the word city is sometimes capitalized and sometimes lowercase, so someone yeah, might want to take Sometimes, a, sometimes that's okay. deliberate. Um, in reference to the city of Glendale. Right, when, when we're talking about the entity of the government of the city of Glendale, that's capitalized. Yeah. If we're referring to the city or the benefits to the city, in general, that's lowercase. Understood. So, yeah, so you saw some mis- Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I'd love to see those. Okay, yeah. on, um, on page two of Exhibit A, um, Point G. Are you are you on the strikeout? Uh, the no, I'm not on the strikeout. Okay, I'm on the yeah. Under G, I think mm -hmm. after visit you want to change that period to a semicolon. You are correct. And then on page four, under um, routine maintenance and repair under E, I think there's an extra word after designation, which is landscaping. You want to strike out? Yes. And then on page six, under findings for designation of historic resources, under number one, at the end of that paragraph, there are two semicolons. You might want to take out one. Mm -hmm. And then I think under um, the next section, findings for deletion of designated historic resources, unless I'm not seeing things, I think we're going A, B, D? We are. Okay. Unintentionally. <laughs> and then on the next page, under E, there's an extra word at the end of that paragraph, code. Yes, that was a constant problem with this, but that is actually That's correct in this case, because it is the State Historical Building Code. So period code? Mm, I'm on 070E. E. Oh, 60E. Sorry. Yeah, under procedure for designation or deletion 60, of historic resources. Yeah, 60 okay, that's e. you're right. And then on page 9, under 1520-84, under C, removal or installation of wall trim. Right. 
on page 10 under 152100. I'm not sure if you want um, the third sentence, Director of Public Works, to be capitalized. And where are we again? Sorry, 152100 on page 10. Unsafe for dangerous conditions. Ah, uh, yes. You're correct. We do not pay you enough. <laughs> <laughs> And then I think I, I just, in, in looking at this, I think I had one more thought, which I, I neglected to bring up. Um, let me see where I saw that. I, I just wanted to, to, to think about um, deletion of historic resources. Mm -hmm. um, under 15-20-55. Second sentence says the deletion of any designated historic resource shall be granted only if city council first finds that the historic resource no longer conforms to any of the findings identified in 152050 of this code. And then I think we talk about um, under 152060, we say designation or deletion of historic resources shall be initiated by an application of an owner of record of the subject property or authorized agents thereof. Mm -hmm. So if the owner or agent were not willing to submit an application for deletion, I mean, how do we, how does, how does city council make that determination and then how do we get the owner to submit an application for deletion. Yeah, we don't actually have a deletion application, even though it says that we do here. <laughs> yes. So we'll have to cross that when we hopefully never come to it. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's an interesting point. I think that we're, we're covered by the fact that the city council can remove something with, uh, let me just, on recommendation of this. Yeah, so owner consent is not required for deletion under 055. And then for 060, we can add in the first sentence of A, um, designation or deletion. Well, we'll have to break that. It's, this probably should have been broken into two sections. Um, because we don't really have, we've never had to delete something from the record, okay. like the Oak of Peace, which theoretically we could delete since it doesn't exist, mm -hmm. but we kind of don't want to. Um, let, let me look into that a little more. I'm not really sure how to, how to deal with that, but I think we're covered under the previous section 055, which kind of sets up that, you know, how to make the findings, and we'll just have to make the procedure kind of jive with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. As you said, it's just sort of a mm -hmm. procedural conflict. On 15.20.070C, did we miss another extra word code at the end? Oh, right. You'll see there were a lot of those. And I thought I'd gone through and done all of those because what we were doing, we did a lot of capitalizations where the previous one, Director of Public Works, Director of, of mm -hmm. Planning, was all under, under or lowercase. What I'm told is when this actually goes to the company that writes our ordinances, once it passes through the whole process, they may go back and lowercase everything. Oh. But for clarity, for us to read it, it's a lot easier mm -hmm. to capitalize. But where was that reference? Um, page, so page eight. eight page. The middle C. C. It says semicolon and then code at the end of C. Yeah, I think I, I crossed that out. Oh, you did. Okay, good. Someone, I think someone caught that or. And then on page 10, I, I referred to my notes from our uh, meeting maybe two months ago. Mm -hmm. And under 15.20.90C, I thought we discussed, and maybe you decided otherwise for some reason, um, in the first sentence it says, in addition to any other remedies provided herein, in the event a designated historic research is completely demolished. I thought we were going to add the word completely or substantially so we'd have a little leeway that even if, you know, three walls were still standing, they couldn't say, well, it wasn't completely. Yeah, what we did, we, we added a definition for complete demolition. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's referred earlier then. Complete demolition means removal of all above-grade portions of a designated historic resource. Um, 
Because this this is what's really what's called the scorched earth ordinance, which is typically you know everything everything okay. is cleared. So I th think we cleared that up through the definition, unless you okay. guys think otherwise. Okay. No. Anyone else? No. Okay. So we need a vote. Yes. A motion to, to recommend, recommend to, to city council. council. Yeah. Who would like to do that? Um. Oh. Yeah, I I, um, I move that the Historic Preservation Commission um, recommend that City Council vote to approve the proposed changes to Title 15.20, uh, Historic Preservation of the Glendale Municipal Code. Second. I'll second. Roll call, please. Okay, Commissioner Vartanian? Yes. Commissioner Tufankian? Yes. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. And Madam Chair Shire. Yes. Five zero in favor. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have six C, and we have a public speaker. Unless you want to want to introduce first, or um, there's not much to say. Okay. So, yeah. so we'll open the public hearing. Sean Bristol. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Shire and uh, members of the Commission. I'm Sean Bursell, Glendale Historical Society, and I agree with Mr. Platt again. There's not much to say. Uh, the Glendale Historical <laughs> Society uh, supports the proposed ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. We'll close the public hearing. Yeah, the, the changes we proposed for this ordinance were just, this was just housekeeping for the most part. Yep. Um, capitalizations, okay. hopefully consistently. We did clarify the uh, procedure for uh, determining chairs, <laughs> vice chair, and chair pro tem, uh, which wasn't clearly laid out before, and then just made some of the language consistent with the uh, 50, section 1520. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else? I just have one thing to ask a question about sure. wording wise. On 2.76.100 uh, powers and duties, um, the cons uh, A, the consideration um, to recommend addition or deletions um, to and from the register, that coincides with what we discussed previously. This not only has to do with things that are before the Commission, but also things that are, we're giving unsolicited recommendations as well. What do you mean? Well, for instance, the 10 city-owned properties that mm -hmm. we recommended that's an unsolicited recommendation we did with it. nobody applied to have those 10 city-owned properties um, designated we the Commission recommended or will be sure, recommending. But, but, but when it comes but, down there will be an application that this that will be filed by the city on behalf of the city absolutely so. but as part of our um, I guess broader responsibilities to make policy and discuss preservation issues with the with the city, does that imply or state explicitly that we can make recommendations? Um, you know, such and such a property should be, or we recommend that it should be placed on the register. And then, of course, well, in in general, we wouldn't would do, do that for not. privately owned properties. Um, we don't want the commission as a body telling people that you should. Okay. So for publicly owned properties, we could that could be part of our policy and issues related. Um, well, I think if you read F, I think that may cover what you're uh, looking at, thinking about. Okay, I just wanted to rule out any. Yeah. Well, to tell tell me if this covers what you're thinking. To explore means for the protection, retention, and use of any designated historic resource, designated historic district, or potential historic resource or district. Um, yes, I guess that very broadly. <laughs> implies that uh, we could we could insert ourselves into the process of making recommendations but yes I, it does technically yeah uh, and also I that. maybe even better is I on page three to recommend and encourage the protection enhancement appreciation and use of structures of blah 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 which have mm -hmm. not been designated as historic resources yes. but are deserving of recognition yes. okay Okay, if there's no further comments. I have a quick question. Jay, I wasn't quite sure what 2.76.050 means. Terms of office has been crossed out and says reserved. What yeah, the, those, those were old. There was old language in there that we deleted. And if you look at the strikeout draft, you can see what was there. It's, uh, it was uh, 
basically just uh, referring terms of office back to other code sections. Now we've incorporated that into 2.76. Um, that's just the convention used by the companies that create the ordinances where that n we can use that number again in the future if we wanted to add something. It's basically a section no longer needed, but the numbers held to not rechange all numbering. Right. Right. Okay. And just add a period to one of those. Okay. Is there a motion to recommend this for approval? Um, okay. <laughs> um, I make a motion that we recommend that the revision in um, uh, the Historic Preservation Commission um, section of the Glendale Municipal Code, Chapter 2.76, be amended um, as described in the um, in the document. And I don't think we made any changes here today. So as is. Add one period. One period added. <laughs> a second. Roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Vartanian? Yes. And Commissioner Topengian? Yes. Madam Chair Shire? Yes. Okay. The five zero in favor. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda is 6D, proposed changes to future Mills Act contracts and the recommendation to City Council. If uh, again, this is uh, when we reviewed this uh, several months ago, uh, the commission felt that the, uh, the our discussions we had many discussions over a period of months talking about what kind of changes we'd make here. Um, the commission felt that this incorporated those. This was also reviewed by city attorney's office and state preservation office without comment. Um, our deputy director Tim Foy um, wanted to. Uh, have the commission reconsider two of the timelines established here, which would be for the uh, for the termite report and for the building inspection report, with the idea that doing that every five years might be kind of a little bit onerous for owners when it's unlikely we're going to be gaining real information during that period. And his recommendation was that the commission consider a 10-year cycle for that, um, but we would still be on the five-year cycle, which is now actually mandated by state law that we inspect all Mills Act properties on a five-year cycle. So without us knowing that that was coming, we are kind, of, we kind of are in tune with what they're recommending from the state. Um, so the only change that we would recommend that you consider for today is to possibly change the, the termite and the building inspection to a 10-year cycle rather than five. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that makes yes. sense. Okay. While we're in that section of inspections, I think there's just a formatting issue with number seven. It's hidden within the paragraph yes. on page three. Okay. That's my only comment. So, I'm sorry, I, I didn't. Page three. Page three. Number seven. Oh, I'm, titled the, I'm sorry, I'm on the strikeout draft. Oh, I'm on the fi final draft. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's just needs to be mm -hmm. left justified. Mm-hmm. And we'll change the terms. Any other revisions or comments? Um, I, I just had a question on maintenance of vegetation. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe. Oh. Did you want to? Well, I mean, I had I had a comment on that as well, but yeah. let's hear what you were. Oh, to vegetation. <laughs> Okay, so Jay, maybe you could explain what um, what we're really saying when we talk about maintenance of vegetation, because um, the section reads all vegetation on the property will be maintained to allow substantial visibility from the public right of way mm -hmm. of all street facing facades, roofs, accessory structures, and or any other features noted in the designation report as character defining, so as to convey the historic character of the property. If a home that's being nominated for designation had, for example, an existing um, hedge fence, mm -hmm. am I being descript, you know, a fence right. of hedging in the front, we wouldn't be telling the owners that they need to take that down. I think that's, I, I think that's exactly what Tim Foy was asking. Um, no, that, that wouldn't be our intention. 
unless, you know, I, I liked the commission to have as much room as possible for case-by-case -case, um, situations. Okay. Um, but that's not the intention to have you have that brought down, but it could be a possibility, you know, mm -hmm. since this is a voluntary contract that the owners are entering into, and if you felt that this phenomenal, you know, site was really not giving what the city hopes to get in return for the Mills Act contract, you'd have the ability to do that. Okay. So, so the wording still leaves it pretty open to the mm -hmm. commission's discretion. And I'm okay with that. Okay. I didn't, I, interestingly, I didn't read it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that it is that way because I think it really has to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. But I kind of read it as, um, Yes, anything blocking the pu public view from the street of the landmark property would have to be taken down if it was def if it was vegetation. So yeah, my answer would have been the way it's read. Yes, that hedge would have to go. So. Picture adding a sentence here to kind of make that a little more clear. Hopefully, it's okay. just a quick sentence. Um, I'll, I'll work that in, and if I'm having any trouble, I'll uh, you know I, I don't want to. Kind of have to wait till next month mm -hmm. to approve this, but I'll I'll send everyone an email with the change, and then individually you can get back to me if there's any issues. Great, Jay. Yes. If I if I may interject, if I recall when we discussed this some months ago, there was also a lot of discussion about modern homes where mm -hmm. there was very deliberately it was part of the design a hedge obscuring the view of the property from the right of way. That was part of the design aesthetic of you know, many of the mid-century modern homes that we've seen. And I recall that the commission had some discussion about how to deal with those situations with this particular provision. Do you feel that this language allows that kind of flexibility? Well, I think what I'm going to try to do is make this a little more flexible mm -hmm. based on, on the comments. Um, I don't remember that discussion. I, I know the house on um, Edgewick Road that had a kind of a low brick wall. That's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and currently that house is completely visible, and they were going to come back with a proposal um, to fix that wall. I can't remember if that was conditioned. It might be in the Mills Act condition, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to revise this. I'll run it by staff and, and then let the commission know um, what we're doing with the intention to make sure that we're not limiting your, your powers in terms of recognizing that some landscape features may actually be part of the design and therefore we want to keep them, whereas others are less intentional and they're hiding something that we don't want to be hidden. Yeah, I recall that conversation. I think that's exactly what the intent was, to keep it open-ended enough that we could mm -hmm. weigh either, either direction. Right. Okay, any other comments on the Mills Act? Your motion? Well, I do have one quick question. Oh, yes. As far as the Mills Act, this one, this isn't grandfathered into every the prior properties. This is just yeah. from today forward. Right. Okay. Well, actually, I, I'd have to check. I'm not sure that it will apply. It, there's a possibility that it could apply to all 2012 contracts. Or, you know, we'll ask the city attorney if someone's in the process. They've already applied prior to any decision by council. I'm not sure that this would be retroactive or not. It would be. I think we can add whatever we want to a contract that hasn't been adopted. Okay. Yeah, so then. I'm with you. 2012. Yeah, for current. Okay. Yeah. And, that, and then we, and now we have more of a responsibility in terms of monitoring the existing contracts that predate this, where we're putting the burden on the owner to give us the photographic survey. So we'll come up with an in house policy of how we're going to deal with that. Okay. Uh, motion. I'd be happy to move that this commission recommend that City Council vote to approve the um, historic property or Mills Act contract with um, changes to language in Section 4 maintenance of vegetation to allow for more flexibility in the reading of that section. Is there a second? I second. Roll call, please. Sure. Commissioner Vartanian? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? I'm yes. sorry, Commissioner Vidor? Yes. And mm -hmm. Commissioner Morgan now? Yes. Mr. Tupengian? Yes. Madam Chair Shire? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes all in favor. 
thank you, staff, for all your work on yes. all of these. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, we have uh, E, consideration of commissioner generated proposals. And we, uh, the chart is now up to date. Um, and we don't have, well, I didn't update the date at the top of it, but uh, mm -hmm. August. But we don't have any uh, proposed topics in the balance right now. So, so would the topic of um, historic districting fees be something that would go on this chart, or is that something mm -hmm. completely That's separate, right? Yeah, okay. that would be good. good Do we need a sponsor? And a s I think we have a sponsor second. already. So we, <laughs> do, we do need a second. second. Yeah. Mike Morgan. And for that, we'll consider both refunds and then also the possibility of a tiered scale based on the size of the district. I'd just like to be clear that the fees are set by the city council in a resolution. That's not something you can implement on a staff level. But we'll be able to make a recommendation based on commissions. Okay. It might be helpful prior to that discussion to understand uh, Glendale Historic Society's grant and what um, what resources are available and or how much it might play into our discussions of these. Yes, I, I look forward to talking to the Historical Society about that program, which is great. <laughs> so. Okay, shall we move on? 6F, discussion of possible activities for May 2013 Historic Preservation Month. Um, not, not much change from last time we talked about it. Um, we are working on a walking tour brochure. We've compiled all of the previous brochures. And what we're looking at is a civic center focused tour where we have such a nice, you know, uh, density of resources of various types. And it's a very walkable kind of distance. We'll be working with the Historical Society on that ultimately in partnership. Um, but in terms of putting together the brochure, so far we're, we've pulled together everything that we have, and it's definitely, you know, certainly a couple of hours worth of, of sites to, to look at. And then I've had a few ideas recently of other things we could add, just kind of local color kind of stuff where it's mm -hmm. not even necessarily about a building um, that you're looking at, but just about downtown. So, mm -hmm. Great. And then... Uh, and no, mo no move on any other ideas um, that we've discussed. So. Is this, um, uh, I don't know where we are with landmarks, and I don't know if it dovetails with Historic Preservation Month or actually if we're there already, but we talked about when we hit 100 landmarks that you know, we would, that would be something worth celebrating in mm -hmm. what way, I'm not exactly sure. But well, we. Today's um, house on Kenneth would be 95, so we are pushing 100. Have to slow it down a little if we want to make it, <laughs> make it go till May. May. So, um, well, maybe we can just celebrate the milestone celebrate having early. been achieved yes, in, right. in, in May. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe could we also take the opportunity to somehow give some more publicity, maybe it'll be a done deal by then for the city-owned properties that are being looked at as possible additions to the district. Sure. And so we, have a, we have a volunteer intern who is with us in the audience today, Eileen Babakhani, who is working on the nomination for the building that we're sitting in right now. Um, she's got a first draft completed and everything's looking good. So uh, what we'll do is kind of get these all prepared, and then we're not going to be submitting them piecemeal. We'll kind of move forward as a group. Um, we're still interested in any um, members of the community who are interested in writing nominations. We're looking at other city staff, um, particularly from libraries who might be interested in this. Um, but we're also in a period of staff cutbacks, and people may have less time to do something like this. So we're going to move as fast as we can on it but we've definitely got a good start, so. Great, thank you. Well, and I had mentioned to UJ that I'd be interested in taking on the El Meridor Gates. Mm -hmm. 
And if there are other commissioners that may want to take on one application, I think that would really show our support for what we're all about as a commission and Absolutely. helping the city, especially in a time of cutbacks. I think that would be a mm -hmm. um, good thing to do. So maybe you can consider I'd the be list. Happy to do that. I would be too. Not sure. Do you want to forward, but but do you, just do you want to forward you the list what? via email and have people sure, sign I'll, up, or I'll do you have it with you? Um, I have. I can give it to you after the meeting. Yeah, I'll make some copies, helpful. and you guys can take it home, ruminate, and let me know what you're interested in. So that'd be great. And then just briefly back on the uh, historic preservation month for next year, if the walking tour kind of has the most traction and support of the Glendale Historic Society. Should we just move forward with that as being our event for May 2013 and keep the other ideas for upcoming years? Yeah, I don't think Grand Central Air Terminal is not going to be completed okay. by then, and I think we really want that to be a major celebration yeah. where we could talk about when Glendale ruled the skies <laughs> and um, have a screening uh, for that. Um, we'll definitely, um, assuming we have space at the Central Library, we'll, we'll kind of redo the display that we did this year and hopefully well there'll be some new things to add to it definitely and uh, I'll look back at the list and see if there were any of the kind of the smaller things that we'd mentioned that we might be able to do without a huge amount of time commitment mm -hmm. but I, th I think the tour as a, as a joint project is really exciting yeah. and uh, and it's so much more than we've done before so <laughs> we'll just get better and better excellent yeah. Okay, under eight, any other updates or briefings? For um, us? Just our, our staffing update. You may notice that Armine Sukiazian is with us today, and she's going to be our regular um, help uh, from, from our admin staff. And she's here because Ida Rasper is retiring. Mm -hmm. And Ida has been with the commission for a long time. I'm not sure how many years she was working with us. And she didn't want any fanfare last month, which we already, she knew was going to be her last month with the commission. Mm -hmm. But this is her uh, last week at work, and she's been a great help to us. And so we just want to embarrass her by publicly thanking her. <laughs> Welcome, Wing Armine. So. Welcome. Yes. Welcome, Welcome. Welcome, Armine. And, and thank you to Ida if you're. Watching. Ida. We <laughs> yeah, love you. If you, if you we'll could find please, out. please give our thanks to Ida for her support. Yes. I'll share that. I, I have one uh, briefing. Um, this Thursday, past Thursday, I'm going to embarrass you, Jay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the city manager and staff recognized Jay with his five year service pin. So Jay's been oh, with oh, us for five years. Already. Yeah. Flies when you're. Um, and I did as part of his recognition, Jay, by the numbers. When Jay started with uh, the city five years ago, there were 62 properties on the Glendale Register. Um, of course, there's now 94 with one more pending, along with uh, all the properties in historic districts, which I think came out to be 667 properties with some form of historic uh, protection or recognition. Um, which is a magnitude of 10 since in the five years Chase has been here, plus 179 homes now to be added with North Cumberland Heights. Yes, I'm a firm believer we, in we job like security. <laughs> <laughs> We're also looking into cloning technology to see if we can <laughs> <laughs> duplicate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. hard work. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Excellent. Five years. Awesome work. It's okay. Yes. We're proud. Ow. <laughs> okay. Question. Um, do, can you just go over the dates of the commission meetings oh, right. coming up? Um, I actually don't have the calendar in front of me, if anyone can help with that. Um, traditionally, we um, cancel our November regular meeting and our December regular meeting because it always coincides with Thanksgiving and Christmas, and generally kind of try to have a meeting in the beginning of December, either the first or the second week of December. Um, I wanted to just uh, let the commissioners know that we're looking for, we start trying to do it on Monday so that we keep to our regular day, but then we also have to work with GTV6 and the other boards and commissions to make sure we're not competing for a time slot. So if the commissioners could let me know what their availability is those first two weeks uh, on the Monday afternoon, and then we'll go from there in terms of finding a date. So it'll be December. Otherwise, we're on our regular fourth Monday of each month schedule. If I may interject on this one, it, from my calendar, it looks like 
the fourth Monday of November, the 26th, is actually the Monday after Thanksgiving. So I don't know what we would do. Yeah, we, we, we could Maybe keep to that schedule, but then we wouldn't have a meeting until the end of January. Right. Um, so. so it might be like in December 3rd, which would be the following Monday, yeah. the 10th. And then for people who go away, sometimes mm -hmm. it's nicer to come back on a Monday than a Sunday. So. Mm -hmm. The 3rd, you're saying? December 3rd? December 3rd or 10th. Or 10th. Okay. December 3rd works. Is the 10th? Or any of those? 10th is okay, too. All, Either, all of them are. Or the 10th is good? Okay, so we'll double check and see what works, and then I'll send out a message. Okay. And with that, meeting adjourned.